Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I am doing our part three of our moving update. So I've been trying to keep you guys in the loop on the process of selling our home and buying our new homestead. And so if you've missed part one and part two, I will link those down below. So make sure you go and watch those first. So you kind of know what's going on here. Now I explained in part two that I was not going to be publishing the rest of these until we've closed on our houses. So you won't see part two and then also this part three until we've already closed. So it'll be a little bit late, but I still wanted to document this and let you guys know what's going on just in case someone else saw the videos and it messed with the process or, or anything. My mom, who's actually our realtor, advised me to do that and I thought that was a good idea. So this is just going out later. It's not quite coming out as it's happening, but close. We're not that far behind. So keep that in mind while you're watching this is that this all this stuff happened a few weeks ago. But we have been in this home for three years now. We fully remodeled it. It's over 100 years old and we are under contract on a new home that is out of town. It's on almost 10 acres. It's also about 100 years old, a little bit newer than this one. But it's been quite a roller coaster going through the process of selling and buying a house in this crazy market. So I've been trying to document what's been going on and we've had a new development, so I figured it's about time for another video. So in the last update, I kind of left you guys with where we had our inspection on our current home scheduled. We have both the homestead we want to buy and our current house under contract. We already had the inspection on our new home and we had the inspection scheduled on this home. It actually got moved out further, which was really hard to wait extra time because that's like one of the last big hurdles or that is the last big hurdle in this whole process is the inspection. So I was like, I just want to get over with. I did not want to wait. <laughs> so the inspection finally happened. It actually happened this last Monday, which as you guys are seeing this, that'll be weeks and weeks ago. So a guy came and installed a radon testing kit thing a few days before that. And then he came and picked it up that Friday and it was all good. The radon came back perfectly fine. And then the next Monday was the official the whole house inspection. And I actually had a dentist appointment that morning, so I ran and dropped the kids off at my mom's house and I had to go do my dentist thing and then I had to go back to my mom's house and hang out with the kids until they were done with the inspection and done looking around at the place again. So that was quite a long day. I didn't really hear much at all about what happened during the inspection. We were a little bit concerned about the foundation of this house because when we moved in, we found out that it has a rubble foundation, which can really freak some people out. I feel like it's not a huge deal because this house has been standing for over 120 years and it's not like it's gonna go anywhere. It's done a lot of its sh shifting and settling that it's going to do. And there's nothing that's like having damage caused. Like if it was a situation where as the ground froze and thawed, thawed each year, it was like sh really shifting things and making things break or the floors bow or the things crack around the house, that would be a different story. That's actually the situation on the house we're moving into. That one we'll have to get dealt with faster. This one, there's nothing that's really changing. Like it's kind of settled into place. It's not really going anywhere. It's been here for 120 years. So it's not like it really even has to be fixed. But I also know that it does freak out a lot of people. It's like kind of a big deal. So we were quite concerned about that. Just, get, I mean, it's not like anything we're trying to hide. We knew the inspector would tell them all about it and we don't want to like force anyone into buying something they're not comfortable with of course but we also knew that if we didn't keep the sale going through that we may lose the homestead that we want to buy during the inspection at some point my mom who's a realtor called me she was here and she said they found a loose wire that's attached to the top of our house it goes like from the electrical pole to a pole on top of our house and it was loose and making contact with the metal roof so that was unexpected and we i think it's actually been like that for a while and it's not been causing any problems because luke said when he painted it was like that and he didn't know there was anything wrong with it so thankfully it didn't start any fires or anything but i guess it wasn't as bad as the inspector made it out to be but i had the electrical company come out here while they were here and fix it right away and then we knew he was getting the inspection report back the next day. We were hoping that after thinking about it, after 
talking to the inspector and then getting the inspection report the next morning that he would maybe make a decision that day sometime on the Tuesday. But no, he was kind of MIA all day. My our realtor couldn't get a hold of them, so we didn't really know what they were thinking at all. It was very stressful. I really had to come to a place of accepting that it just really may not work and we did still have a backup offer, so it could have been that if he backed out, we could have moved on to the next people and maybe not lost the house that we wanted, but it would have been stressful and a little bit tight. But thankfully, the next day, he did make a decision. He, and I was totally expecting like him to either back out or ask for something ridiculous, like $50,000 at the price, or ask us to fix a lot of the stuff before we left which there's almost nothing left on this house that we can fix by ourselves because that's what we've been doing the last three years is we've been fixing everything we can possibly fix. So I was, th I was thinking like what, I don't even know what on this house we would fix ourselves in like the last three weeks we're living here. So I was trying to really mentally prepare myself for those three options and just kind of prepare myself for the worst. But thank the Lord he came back and he only asked for $15,000 off the price. And we were prepared to go down 20-ish thousand. That's the very lowest we could have gone. Like, it would have been tight. We do want to take some money with us to the next house so we're not, like, at totally zero. But we were pre prepared to go down another 20,000. I was totally expecting that if he asked for some money off the price that he would ask for something like 50,000 off because foundations, if he was going to try to fix it, it would be like 4,000 for the foundation and then I don't know, it seemed like there was some electrical code problems and stuff. But, so it was like completely shocking and absolutely so exciting that all he asked for was 15,000. So we said, yes, we'll take it. So he signed the counter offer. I, I think that's what it's called. He signed the thing asking for the 15,000 off and then we signed it. And so we're moving forward. And I am so relieved, like you literally have no idea how relieved I am because, and then now especially because he's a cash buyer, there's no appraisals, the inspection was the very last thing. So at this point, there is no way he can back out without breaching contract. So it's almost like a done deal. Like it's just set. This is, we have someone that's going to buy our house. We're past inspections. We're past all the hard parts. And I am just beyond thrilled that it's over. <laughs> and we got a little bit less for our house than we were originally hoping for, but it's still gonna work for us financially to go into this next house. We'll still have a little bit left over. So that's unbelievably exciting. And I was just kind of in shock for the rest of the day that it was done. Cause it's, it feels like at every single step of the way, it's been like a fight to get through each step. It's been a struggle things just haven't gone well and then all of a sudden to have this thing like that's like all he asked off and it's just like working it was like a little bit of a shock and I've been so mentally preparing myself that we're just gonna lose the house we want it's just not gonna work out we're gonna stay here forever just so that if it does happen I won't be devastated and I had finally gotten my mind on the right track and I kind of accepted it and then like a couple days later that happens and I'm just like I don't even know what to do anymore. Like, my brain's just so tired from going back and forth at this point. So now basically the last step is to get an appraisal on our new house, which we are going conventional loan. So everyone that I've asked about it says that it should be absolutely no big deal for the appraisal to be fine. Like the house is worth what we're paying for it. The bank should be totally fine with that. And appraisals are kind of like no big deal, like the inspections are the big, big deal, and then appraisals are kind of like, you know, nothing normally happens with those. So we're kind of like at the point where it's like for sure enough that we're getting this house that I can start getting excited about it. I've been so trying to block this because my brain just wants to plan and like plan out our living room and where all the furniture is going to go and like what we're going to do with the house. And so I've been trying to like block that out and not think about it because I don't want to get too attached in case we lose the house because then I'll be devastated. <laughs> but now that we're pretty like certain going to get the house. We're through enough of the hurdles. I can let myself plan all this now and it's so exciting. So I've already got it all in my brain where I want each piece of the furniture 
to go in our living room or in bedrooms and I even have some of like the remodel ideas planned out so we're gonna have a lot to do when we move in there and I really want to take you guys along on the lot, a lot of the process of moving in, empty house tours, and a lot of the renovation process on the new house. So I'm just so thrilled that it's all finally working out and it's gonna be so unbelievably nice once we are moved in and we can start settling in before we have the baby because I am about 23 weeks pregnant with our third baby and I would love it if we could be like well settled in before the baby gets here. That's my main goal. So I think that's pretty much all the new updates. The main thing is that we are through inspections. We have one appraisal left and then we're like home free. Oh, because we have a cash buyer, our house is going to close like two weeks sooner than our new house. The guy said we can totally stay here until our new house closes, which is really nice of him. But I was thinking that since there's no one actually currently living in our new house, it's vacant. It's vacant. It was a rental house before they listed it. I was thinking we would try to get early possession and just try to move in that two weeks earlier because I'm just so excited to move in. It's going to be very fun and just nice to have them moving over with because that's that's the next big stressful thing is packing up our house and moving with all these little kids. But anyway, that's enough rambling for me. I hope you guys enjoy this update. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel because as you can tell, I have a lot of exciting content coming up as moving from a little homestead right in town to a real homestead on 10 acres out in the country. So you guys do not wanna miss all the fun stuff coming up. Please go over to my website and subscribe to my email list so that you always know what's going on. But thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.